Hi, this is curve sketching now out of 1.3, and so that's what we want to try to do, curve sketching. Number, uh, we want to find, sorry, domain, reduce the function, vertical asymptotes, holes, and end behavior. So let's look at number 15. If you notice, the denominator has a higher degree than the numerator, so straight away our end behavior is going to be a horizontal asymptote, and the equation for that is going to be y equal to 0. Make sure you include the y equal to, don't just put down 0. Domain, well, I factored the denominator here, x times x minus 2, the quantity of that. So x can't be 0, nor can it be 2. And then that leads us straight to our vertical asymptotes, x equal to 0 and x equal to 2. So that's number 15. So if you want to go ahead and graph that on your calculator for 15, you can. Now 16... When we look at 16 here, this one ha has a degree in the numerator that is a little bit higher than the degree in the denominator. What does that do for us? Well, that tells me that I'm going to go for my end behavior off to infinity or negative infinity. And it's going to end up looking like some slant asymptote out there. Why don't you try this one and then I'll post the answers. So I have the domain, x can't be negative 3, vertical asymptote, x is equal to negative 3. End behavior, I don't expect us to be able to do this. You should be able to do it if you found it great. But this is more what we did a little bit in pre-calculus. This won't show up in this class, if at all. So I'm not too worried about it, so I'm not going to show you. But you should know that as, g, as the limit as x goes to infinity of g of x is equal to infinity and the limit as x goes to negative infinity of g of x is equal to negative infinity. And that's how we're behaving at our ends. Now for number 17, we have this function right here. And so uh, I, we factored it for you here. Now if you notice, these two factors do cancel. And so when we do the reduced form, we're going to get x plus 4 over x plus 2. But when we do talk about the domain here, the domain is an exclusion by both of these terms. The x minus 2 canceling here is going to give us a whole. So my domain is x can't be negative 2, nor can it be 2. So when we talk about vertical asymptotes, though, the one that's left, this one right here, is the one that we'll have to indicate is a vertical asymptote. The one that did cancel, this x minus 2 thing here, x equal to 2, would be a whole. Now what we should do is find the y-coordinate. To find this y-coordinate, if you remember, we go to the reduced form and plug in the 2 to figure out what's there. Now if you do plug in 2, you're going to get 6 over 4, which would be 3 halves. So to find the whole, once again, take the x plug it into the reduced form, and that's how you find the y-coordinate. Now your end behavior, what happens is that since we have the cancel, we can go to the reduced form and just look at my leading terms here, 1 and 1, and we get y equal to 1 as your end behavior. And now we also have our curve sketching recipe to put all this together. So we want to give the domain and then we also want to reduce the function if we can. Factor and cancel. Three, find vertical asymptotes. Four, x and y intercepts. I forgot holes up here too. And then five, find the end behavior using the highest degree uh, terms of the numerator and denominator. Six, find a starting point or maybe a couple points. And then seven, go ahead and graph. So number 18, if you notice, this is just a polynomial, and it's already in factored form. And so we have to just find the zeros, and that can be our x-intercepts. So I have x equal to 0, I have x equal to 1, and x equal to negative 2. Notice that both of these are single, 0 and 1. So this would be an odd, odd, and then this one would be an even which would give us a bounce because of the squared there. Our domain, 
all reals. We don't have any problems with polynomials in domain. Y-intercept. Our Y-intercept is when X is 0. So that would be 0, 0. And then our N behavior. N behavior, this is a fourth degree polynomial. Leading coefficient's positive. So my end behavior on both sides is going to be going off to pause infinity. So if we graph this, it's going to go through the curve at here and here, and then it's going to bounce at x equal to negative 2. And our end behavior comes in, so I'm going to go to negative 2, do a bounce. I missed with my pen, sorry, but I should bounce there. And then I go to 0. And it's going to go through that, and it's going to go through 1. And then my end behavior for a fourth degree polynomial did turn out correct for that. So that's the graph of that polynomial. Number 19. Uh, if we find domain, so look at the denominator. x can't be 0, 1, or 3. Those three things it can't be reduced. I just see that I can cancel out this x minus 1, one of them. And I also didn't look at this, but we can cancel out one of these x's. So this is the reduced form that I can get from that. Now the vertical asymptotes from this would be whatever's left over. So x is equal to, I can't squeeze this in here. So this would be x equal to 0 and x equal to 3. Notice that this one would be an even one, a little volcano action, and then this one would be an odd one. Now for holes, this is interesting. I did cancel one of these x's. However, I still have this x in the denominator. So that still would be a vertical asymptote. It does not turn into a hole. But the x minus 1, one of those cancels, I don't have any x minus 1's left in my denominator. So that would be what would give me the hole. So if I take and I get a 1, if I plug that one in, notice that the numerator turns to 0 when I plug in the 1 to my reduced form, and so then I get the point 1, 0. X intercepts, that's when the numerator is 0. So that would be x equal to 1, except for I'm going to have a hole there, so I can't really write that. And so I'm going to end up with just 1 at negative 3, 0, because that comes from the numerators, x-intercepts do. Y-intercepts are when x is 0, and we see that we have a vertical asymptote, like we said, at x equal to 0. Then my end behavior, the degree of the numerator looks like a fourth degree, denominator looks like a third degree, so I'm going to get a slant asymptote. And it's going to be like y equal to x something, 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 something like that. Okay? So that's what we have. We don't have a horizontal asymptote. So I set this up here by graphing the vertical asymptotes. I have a hole at 1, 0. And then I also have a hole, I mean, I'm sorry, an intercept at negative 3, 0. Now I need to see what happens. If I find out my behavior at x equal to 0, that should tell me how the rest of this graph goes, because I do have to go through this x-intercept once at x equal to negative 3. So if I take a point, how about point, uh, negative point 0.1? So we're thinking negative point 0.1. If I plug that in to my reduced form, I'm going to get a negative, I'm going to get a positive, I'm going to get a negative, and I'm going to get a positive. So overall, it's going to be a positive value. So I'm going to be approaching this vertical asymptote as a positive, and so that one only can go off to negative infinity because, unless if I have a horizontal asymptote, which I do not have. Then here at 1, 0, what's my behavior at x equal to 0. Now I'm thinking 0.1. If I plug in 0.1, I'm going to get a positive, positive, I'm sorry, I did that wrong, negative, positive, positive, positive. And so overall, this is going to be a negative on this side. Well, it can only do one thing now, so it's going to go up through that. 
And then if I go beyond four, I just have to figure out if I'm positive or negative. If you notice, I've, I plug in four, all these things are gonna be positive. I don't need to know exactly what's going on here, but I do know that I'm approaching a vertical asymptote at x equal to three in a positive fashion, which gives me this right here. And then I continue to go off to positive infinity, so that's what kind of behavior I do have. And for number 20, this one, it has that square root thing, and so we're probably going to have two different horizontal asymptotes that we're going to be looking at. Our NB, well, let's do our domain first. So X has to be, I, I can't do a square root of a negative, and so X has to be greater than 2 or x has to be less than negative 2. I don't have much room here, sorry. Vertical asymptotes occur when x would be 2 or x would be negative 2. And then holes, there's none because nothing factors cancels. And then the x-intercept would be at, oh, why not at x equal to negative 1? Well, that doesn't fit into our domain. So usually you look at the numerator for that. Numerator tells me negative 1, but that does not satisfy my domain. Y-intercept, I have nothing there. As well, there's just a void between negative 2 and 2. Then my end behavior. Well, the numerator is going to go off to pause infinity as x goes to pause infinity. This would go to pause infinity as well. The denominator is going to behave like the absolute value of x. So this is kind of what I have for big X. And so when we look at that, that's going to be y equal to 1. As I go the other way, I'm going to get y equal to negative 1. So this would be your right, and this would be your left. And then our starting point, well, you can pick points if you wish. i got to erase this out so I can get this graph in. So I graphed my asymptotes, right and left, I don't have room to write that in there. Then we have to see what happens as we go to our vertical asymptote. So let's start at x equal to 2. If I take 2 and plug it into my original here, or just something over 2, 2.1, I'm going to get positive, positive. So I am definitely going to be here. And then I also have this horizontal asymptote, so my general behavior is just going to be like that. If I do x equal to negative 2, then I'm thinking negative 2.1. And if I do that, the numerator would be negative, and then the denominator would be positive. And so that would be a negative, and so I'm going to come like this. So there is my graph. You can plot points to get a little bit more accurate, but that's the general shape, and that's what we're looking for. So to do curve sketching, follow the recipe. Find the attributes of the graph put them all together and figure out where the graph goes at different times. Thank you very much. This is the end of 1.3, second part.